Hello and welcome to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas and today I'm going to do a two-part video series on dynamic DNS over DHCP in the Linux environment. The Linux distribution I'm using today is CentOS version 5.5. It's an excellent distribution and is based upon Red Hat Enterprise Edition. Uh, right now I just have a general installation of this operating system, nothing fancy. I installed a couple of the components ahead of time as a time-saving measure and I'll review that right now. Under applications, upper left hand corner, add and remove software. We're going to go to servers and we're going to check on DNS name server. Then we're going to scroll down under network servers, we're going to do the DHCP. And at the bottom under server configuration tools, we're going to choose system config bind. Nice graphical user interface here for managing your DNS records. Uh, check uh, under apply, click on that, install these components. When that is finished, we're going to need to open a web browser and go to www.webmin.com and download the latest version of Webmin. And just double click on it and install it. Webmin is an excellent uh, administrative tool uh, within Linux. It's free to download and it uses your web browser kind of giving you a graphical user interface to manage these services in your Linux environment. It's a pretty good, it's, in fact it's an awesome tool. Once you start using it you really become dependent on it. I like it a lot. Alright, one last component here. And we're going to open a terminal. And I'm going to paste this in. And I'll give you a second to read this. It's a ch root, ch root component, and let's install it. And yes, we would like to install this. Otherwise, we're not going to go any farther. <coughs> Excellent, that is now done. Okay, we're going to go to System, Administration, Server Settings, and this is that domain name system. This is that graphical user interface I was talking about earlier. Open that up, it's going to search for the name config. We don't have one, it'll create just a general template, and it'll create a lot of zones we're not going to need, so we're just going to delete these. Remember, you can always add zones, that's not a problem. This little dot, this little period is the uh, root. We won't be able to delete that through this user interface. We'll do that through Webmin, so just forego that. File, save, yes. And now we're going to use the Webmin I was talking about earlier. So launch your web browser. And we're going to go to localhost port 10,000. Of course, from any PC, you can get to Webmin, just use the IP address or host name of your server. Well, actually, you'll be able to use your host name of your server once we get the DNS running. And port 10,000. <coughs> Alright. Log in. Whatever your root password is, or your super user password. I'm going to click on servers bind DNS server. There is that root zone. We're just going to delete that. Excellent. Now it's gone. A lot of this is just self-explanatory. You click on a link, it tells you what to do next. It's not rocket science. It's just trying to get all your ducks in a row. Alright. Domain name, name system. See that little dot's gone? Excellent. We're going to right click on DNS server. We're going to add a zone. This is our first zone. We're going to do the in internet and we're going to change this to the reverse zone. It's going to be a reverse lookup zone, IP version 4. Click on this, let's add all three, and we're going to put our IP address scheme in there. Mine happens to be 10.0.2. I'm sure yours is different. And keep it on master and go OK. These are parameters for your DNS files. How long, you know, refresh intervals, how long do you want them to, like, renew, delete. That's all personal preference. So, I usually use the default. This is what we need to address at the bottom here. 
this particular um, zone path needs to be changed. I'm just going to copy the new zone path in here. As you can see, it's a reverse of my IP. Instead of 10.0.2, it's 2.0.10.in-addr.arpa.zone. The dot zone is very important. And when you hit OK, it appears like nothing happens. Don't worry about that. It did. It's just the way the software works. And hit save. Then get out of it and go back into it. This refreshes it. And there it is. Now we're going to do our forward zone. Same process. Add zone. Internet. Forward. This is going to be your domain name. The name you're going to use. Mine. I'm just going to make mine Linux.local. For the, uh, just for the sake of this video we're doing. And make sure you put a period on the end. If you don't append that, it's not going to work. It just won't take the information. Okay, same thing. All about the parameters here. I use the default. Just remember at the end here, we're just going to change that to zone. And we're going to do a file save. And before I proceed, I, uh, I, this RNDC key, very important. This is an algorithm. This creates the secure, uh, security key that passes the information between your DNS and DHCP. You know, it's one thing to go into like uh, like a webmin or or this domain name server and just create a static record. You know, that, that, that's fine. But when you pick up new IP addresses on your network, you want it to pass on that information to the uh, DNS and create a record and, and update that record. That way, it makes management of small, medium, large businesses manageable. So, this is the key that passes the information securely. And this can be changed at any time. So if you feel that your key has been compromised, just click on it, create a new key. There's a good one. X4J. I'll refer to that later. And then save it. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to go back into Webmin. Good old Webmin. And just click on it and refresh it. Okay, there are two zones. Now, this right here is our named config. We need to make a few changes here. So let me just copy and paste this over. Just take a moment. Give myself a little bit of space, some working room here. Give you a second to type that out. I don't think it's necessary for me to read it out. Just trying to do this video in a certain amount. I only have so much time on this YouTube video. Remember to pause button is your best friend. And I'm going to make a little more room here. And we'll paste that. Make a little more room. The same here and that's pretty much it we're gonna save that for now we're not gonna start yet we're not quite there so minimize it go into the computer and we're gonna drill down to the Etsy then the resolve configuration file which is way down here and open that up with your favorite text editor let's change this to localhost 127.0.0.1 and put your domain in here for your search domain. Uh, mine is linux.local. Save that. We're doing good. Now we need to do a couple more configurations here. So open computer and let's drill down to the var var and then the named directory. And then we're going to go into the ch root directory and then we're going to go into var again and then we're going to go into named remember these zones we created earlier all these unnecessary ones this will really get rid of them just delete it so you don't get confused later now these two are the ones we're working with very important so all we're going to do here is highlight them copy them remember that slave directory we talked about in webmin well, we're going to paste the copy into there. So we're going to have working copies here and in slaves. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's, this is very simple so far. 
nothing really other than just copying and pasting and moving stuff around. Now we got to set a few permissions on those uh, folders. I'm sorry, those files. Open up your terminal, and we're going to move to that directory, which would have been the named slash slaves directory. CD, name, CD uh, var named, ch root var named slaves. And let's just set our permissions real quick on those files. Uh, chgrp space named asterisk. And one more. chmod, you Linux guys know what this is. Uh, G plus W space asterisk and I'm one that's pretty much it now let's go back into our named config bind DNS and we're gonna have to address our forward and transfer zones your forward zone is what gets you out to the internet in my case I have a public name server 10.0.2.86 if you don't have the luxury of having a name server just use the IP address of your router, whatever brand router you're using. In most cases, it's like 192.168.1.1, unless your ISP provides you with a um, name server. Or you can just use OpenDNS. Just go to Google, type in OpenDNS, and find out the IPs of what the OpenDNS servers are. Save that. And now for the big test. Start. Excellent. It is now working. Now. In some cases, you, know, you might have did a, like a missed possible punctuation or a period or a semicolon somewhere. So you can run this check bind config. This is a great little utility in Webmin. I have no errors that were found in my name config. But let's say there was. Let's say I missed a semicolon. Believe me, it's not the first time I missed something. It's probably not going to be the last. So now I try to start it. Oh, <clears throat> what's going on here? It's basically telling you missed a semicolon. It kind of tells you where it's at. So let's just go back into the edit config file, which is your name config, and it's kind of obvious. You know, I'm missing a semicolon here. I save it, and we're going to start it back up. And that's pretty much it. DNS is now running. And thank you for watching the first half of this video. And I will start the second video here in a moment, and we will continue on with the DHCP portion of it, and we'll test the DHCP to make sure that it's passing information between, you know, that and the DNS server. And so thank you very much, and I will be right back.